Did you know that as per a Gallup survey conducted a couple of years back, uh, 83% of our current workforce uh, concluded that they uh, did not find the feedback from the managers as meaningful. Now, I could have lived with a 30% or 40% or even uh, 50%. 83% means um, it's, it's almost 90% of people uh, believing that feedback is not meaningful. Now, that basically shows that something is not right. Um, either the, 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 the feedback system that we had before um, are not working anymore, or maybe uh, people are not giving so much importance to feedback, and that's where the uh, feedback has just, just become a formality uh, rather than an important tool. All first-time managers, and even if you're a manager who is managing for two or three years, uh, just starting your management career, must understand that feedback is one of the most important tool uh, which given right will help in your performance, uh, it will lower down your attrition, um, it can help your employee engagement and motivating your people to do better work. But if the same feedback uh, given incorrectly, if feedback gone wrong, uh, not only it will uh, you know, hit your numbers uh, in terms of attrition going up or engagement going down or uh, your, your motivation going down, your performance going down, uh, other than those metrics, uh, it will actually make you much weaker manager and it will leave your team member in, in a very, uh, you know, in a confused and turmoil state of mind all along. And they'll, they'll rather than loving their job, they'll start hating their job. Because unlike uh, a typical soft skill, uh, feedback, um, I believe, uh, is, is more of an art. Because it's, it's, it's not enough to know uh, how to give feedback, how to provide effective feedback. Uh, the time and place of the feedback is as important. Uh, whether it's a virtual feedback, whether it's a face-to-face -face feedback, the impact of feedback varies, right? Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're in, a, if you're in a, a face to face situation, where to sit, where to position yourself, your body language, your active listening, everything matters in providing feedback. So I like to call feedback the art of giving feedback. And it is such an important tool that I decided to split this thing up into two parts because it's not possible for me to provide you some training on feedback uh, in just 15 to 20 minutes video. Uh, to, to, to do justice to this important subject, I divided to split it up. Uh, so in, in this particular part, which is the first part, I'm going to concentrate on making you, you guys understand uh, what's the intention of giving feedback and what are the laws of feedback, right? Um, not rules, uh, not regulations, not just tips and tricks of bettering feedback, laws of feedback, pretty much uh, un, undisputed set of uh, regulations, um, you know, which basically means that if you're providing feedback uh, 100 times or 200 times in a year, out of that 90% or 80% of the time, are you breaching those laws of feedback? Uh, that's basically the equation that uh, we are looking at to better. All right, so I've spoken enough. Uh, let me shut my mouth. Let's move to the screen and start learning and happy learning. <music> Hi there, in this video we're going to talk about how to provide feedback, so the art of giving feedback. Now feedback is uh, such an important part of a, of a manager's life that each and every day or a week or a month you will find yourself providing feedback whether sitting with the employee one-on-one -on -one or virtually. Uh, we'll start with a, a statistics that might shock you and this was done a couple of years back, not too long back by Gallup, so they did a survey uh, particularly in United States, uh, in, a, in a good number of organizations, so sample size is good enough. And they found that the 83% of millennials who are the uh, current workforce, they say that the feedback they receive from their managers is not meaningful. Just like you, when I first read about this survey, I was equally shocked. And that led me into doing a lot of research and trying to figure out why this has happened. And what basically came across uh, through my research are that the conventional feedback system has failed miserably. Number two, the generation have changed, but the feedback ways and methods have not. And number three, feedbacks have become very, very predictable and ineffective. Let's start to try to understand on what is a feedback and what is the motive of a feedback, why it is really needed. Why, why can't you just uh, move on and run your day-to-day -day operation without feedback? 
So feedback is basically nothing but a reaction to a process or activity or the information obtained from such a reaction. And there are only two and two motives of providing feedbacks. Number one, to continue doing the good work. And number two, improve on the performance or behavior of an employee. And these are uh, so strong uh, in their cause that it will compel you to provide feedback uh, very consistently. If you do not, then you will not see uh, your team performance go up or you might see that your team, the behavior or the culture in your team get disrupted. So feedback means basically a head-to-head -head confrontation with some of your loved or hated employees. And a lot of time managers uh, hesitates to go in for it because it's very uncomfortable feeling uh, to sit with an employee and tell that you are not doing a good job or uh, you know you need to improve here uh, right it, it's, a, it's a very uncomfortable situation to be in so a lot of manager hesitates to go in for it or lacks the courage also thinking the negative side effects uh, more than the positive one so a lot of manager thinks that if I uh, provide a negative feedback to uh, a particular person uh, I don't know how that person will interpret that feedback and how will he react will he uh, be annoyed with me and move out of the team uh, thereby I, I might suffer an attrition right so a lot of negative side effect uh, can, can trigger in and thinking about about all those negative side effects some of some of the time uh, managers lacks courage to to provide feedback as well do remember that no feedback means the employee will feel ignored and slowly gets disengaged, which is which is very, very bad for any team or organization to happen. When someone does not know what they are doing every day is doing anything good or bad, then passion and interest in the work fades away. Even a negative feedback is better than no feedback. If you are a first time manager, then this is something that you have to cultivate within you, that you must gather the courage to sit and talk with the employee and provide him feedback. Doesn't matter if, if it is a positive feedback or a negative feedback. You must have that courage and cultivate that courage and a ritual and a routine wherein you can just sit and talk to the employee about good or bad things that he or she is doing. That's the starting point. You, you need to start talking to the person. So as a manager, that level of courage is expected that you should have so let's uh, let me give you some very important tricks and tips that you should be able to utilize in your day-to-day uh, -day career of manager begin with the end in mind what i mean by that is when you are preparing for a feedback session with an employee start thinking and especially th this this is especially uh, very true for this new generation the, the new generation brings a lot of new challenges to the managers you need to think in a different way so that your uh, your feedback is more impactful to the current generation what i what i mean by this is before you start giving a feedback you already know which person i'm going to give feedback today and since you know you already know whether the feedback is a good feedback or a bad feedback whether it's a positive one or it's a negative one you already know that so since you know that you know that there would be a confrontation with the employee today. You need to start thinking first that once the feedback session is over and the employee leaves the room, what kind of feeling or an impact I want to impart on the employee. That's the end result. If the feeling is not proper, if the impact is not there, then the time you have spent with the employee has gone down the drain. So you need to begin with the end in mind. Think about what would be the end result of the feedback. After the feedback, how would I want the employee to feel? So let's say you provide a feedback to an employee today. After the feedback, the employee leaves the room, heads straight to the pantry, picks up a, a coffee, and while he's sipping on the coffee, he does like this. Do you want this kind of impact on the employee? I'm sure you do not want, right? Or let's say you provide uh, a, a negative feedback to an employee. You are not happy with an employee's behavior or maybe performance. So you, you call in the employee, you provide a negative feedback, right? And after the feedback, do you want the employee to go back to his desk really annoyed? And he's so annoyed that he wants to just pick up a hammer and smash his laptop. Do you want that kind of feeling within an employee? No, right? Or you want an employee to feel 
very ashamed and humiliated post the feedback does that feeling you want to generate within the employee absolutely not right so what is the feeling you want to generate within an employee after you're done with the feedback so let's say you have given a good feedback to an employee what is the feeling you want to generate with an employee what kind of impact you want to have uh, on the employee after the feedback is done you want the employee to feel proud and good about himself post the feedback just like this right that's the kind of feeling you want to generate because if you are capable of generating that kind of feeling and impact post your feedback session then chances are that you will you will see repetition of the good performance or if you are providing a negative feedback to a person that the person maybe has uh, performed poorly or shown some poor behavior and you have called in the employee and uh, you have provided him the feedback you would want to impart a feeling on the employee post he leaves his room something like this in a reflective and thoughtful state that what did i do wrong where how can i improve if you can uh, lead the employee in this kind of a mindset don't you think that the result would be much more positive don't you think the employee would realize his mistake sooner or later and try to improve on it so that's what i meant by saying begin with the end in mind start thinking that after the feedback is over what kind of feeling i would want to impart on the employee and if you and if you start uh, with begin with the end in mind mindset i think a major part of your job would be automatically done how can you then prepare for the feedback you know that this is the feeling i want to impart on the employee post the feedback so what's the preparation you need to take for that the first one of course you have to take is uh, before the feedback session is homework thorough homework uh, you need to have your research done you need to have your data points correct you need to know what are the points you'd be talking to the employee you, you need to have a clear plan chalked up that these are the points that i would talk to the employee and if the employee disagrees with me i should be able to uh, show him proofs or data uh, so that he understands from where i'm coming from so you you should have a clear plan in place if you do not have do not provide feedback to the employee that particular day take some time arrange those data points and then engage with the employee next day right so do not engage with an employee without preparation remember feedback is not only a criticism or a praise it is about observation it is descriptive but non-judgmental this is also um, a very critical phrase you, you see an employee coming late to work for two consecutive days and that is not acceptable for you and as per company policy also that's not acceptable now two managers would provide two different types of feedback to an employee one manager might say that you, you have become an indisciplined person of late so that's that's kind of a judging the employee based on a particular observation right but another manager might uh, give the feed, same feedback in a different way, sitting with the employee and uh, telling the employee that I see that you have not uh, been able to come to work on time for uh, two consecutive days. Can I know the reason wh what happened? Are you going through something? I'm telling the employee about what I have observed and asking for the reason without being judgmental. But the other manager straight away went into a you know judging mode and he judged that the employee has become indisciplined. So, it's about an observation and telling the employee about the observation or describing the observation to the employee without being judgmental unless you're giving a repeated negative feedback uh, to the employee uh, do not sit across the table it presents a more authoritative outlook again a very important tip for you uh, do remember that you know people who normally sit beside you they are your brother or sisters or wife or mother or father or your kids or your friends or your peers right these are the people normally who will always sit beside you and that's because it signifies a close bond within this group but the moment you sit across the table it presents a more authoritative outlook think about the people who sits across the table all the time uh, you might think about uh, an interviewer you might think about an auditor you might think about um, a receptionist. You might think about your manager as well, some CEOs as well. So, so whenever a person sits across the table, it creates a distance, right? 
and and uh, sometimes the distance is of uh, authority sometimes the distance is of uh, unknown identity so when you are providing a negative feedback to an employee maybe the first time or the second time at the mac you don't want to sit across the table uh, and and uh, create a distance because remember when you are providing a negative feedback to an employee already there would be a lot of negative energy generated within the room and between uh, you and the employee right there, there might be a a tension between you and the employee and you do not want to compound that negative energy or tension by sitting across the table and creating more distance right rather choose to sit just beside an employee um, and that uh, kind of help you to draw a big brother kind of a picture in the in the brain of the employee right uh, that would mean that the employee would be much less uh, defensive and will absorb the criticism uh, pretty well rather than when you are sitting across the table and providing a negative feedback uh, it, it kind of creates a distance and uh, absorbing the criticism becomes uh, more of a challenge for the employee however if you have already provided uh, the same feedback to an employee a lot of times and the employee uh, does not change uh, his or her ways and it seems like intentional so you you know you you, you might have detected a bad apple within the team uh, then it might make sense that that particular time you sit across the table making a statement to the employee. With this, we come to the last and final slide and we're going to talk about laws of feedback. Do note what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about the process or techniques or tools and tips and tricks of feedback. I'm talking about laws of feedback, pretty much undisputable. So if you are a manager and if you are providing feedback with each and every feedback session that you will go through, you must try to follow each and every laws of feedback that we are going to talk about here. If you do not follow, if you miss out on any of these, then chances are the impact you're trying to make on the employee with your feedback sessions, you might not realize that same impact. Let, let's get started and let's start with the main one. Positive feedbacks can be given publicly or privately. However, negative feedbacks always to be given privately. It's pretty easy to understand, but let me expand on this a little bit. When you provide positive feedback to any individual, everyone wants to be appreciated. And when you appreciate someone publicly, openly, without holding back, the feeling that you inject within that particular individual is a feeling of pride. And a feeling of pride, as I mentioned before, is a feeling that will help you to have a repetitive effect on the employee's performance. The employee would want to repeat the same kind of performance or do even better because if he's proud of himself, right? And he's happy that his manager has recognized his good work. He's happy that in front of all the team members, he has been recognized. He feels proud. He feels elevated. And he wants to experience this same feeling over and over again. So he would embark on a repetitive good performance journey. And that is something you would want to do as a manager. A positive feedback given publicly also have a dominate, uh, domino effect on, the, on your other team members. Looking at the public recognition that an employee gets from his manager, the other team member would also uh, feel good about it. And more import importantly, they would want to uh, experience the same thing, right? So they, they would also in turn want to perform better or behave better right and want to get a same public recognition like one of their colleagues and that will create a healthy competition within the team as a whole your team performance will go up right so always provide positive feedback openly publicly do not hold back however negative feedback always needs to be given privately why you need to understand the motive of the feedback Right. And if you if you remember on the first slide, we spoke about there are only two motives of providing a feedback. Number one was to have the good performance going. And number two was to improve on the current performance. Right. So when you provide a negative feedback to an employee at the back of the mind, you know that the reason I'm providing this negative feedback is my intention is to help the employee to improve on his performance. So if that's the intention, you would not want the employee leave the room feeling ashamed or insulted or threatened by you, right? 
of feeling very bad about himself or herself. That's not the feeling you want to impart on the employee. When we talk about begin with the end, of, end in mind, we spoke about after I provide a negative feedback, I want, to, I want the employee not to focus on how I provided the feedback. I want the employee to focus on the problem that has happened and how he can think about that and improve his performance or behavior. If I provide negative feedback publicly, I would generate a feeling of uh, shamefulness within the employee. The employee might have a very bitter feeling uh, against me. And when, when I generate those kind of feelings, chances are that the employee will not uh, take the feedback uh, seriously and uh, he will not, he or she will not work on the core element of the feedback. Rather, he or she might have or might show some side effects, right? And I don't want that. So negative feedback should be given privately. Feedbacks, both positive and negative, must be timely. Do not wait for scheduled day or time for a feedback if, if any particular critical observation is there. Do remember that as human beings are, you know, we have short term memory and long term memory. And <clears throat> when you delay, uh, when you observe something and you delay speaking about it, uh, chances are that you will miss out on those minute uh, details about that particular observation that might be very handy when you are uh, providing feedback to the employee. But if you delay in providing feedback, chances are that certain minute details would be missed out during your engagement with the employee in the feedback session. And that might you know, ha have a less impact on the employee uh, going forward. So try to provide the feedback uh, as and when you see something, as and, you, as and when you uh, see a good performance, appreciate the employee then and there, as and when you see an act of indiscipline or, uh, or misconduct of an employee or performance going down due to some reason. If you think that, you know, there is a critical observation, uh, do not hold back. Immediately sit with the employee and share that observation so that you 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 can share those minute details during those uh, interactions. Feedbacks must be specific to performance and behavior with examples as per expectation. Uh, always avoid generic feedback and perceptive feedback. Don't provide generic feedback. It does not help. Uh, if you provide specific direction and specific feedback uh, in terms of performance or behavior, providing examples, it will be very clear to the employee uh, what he or she needs to work upon. For example, if I'm sitting with a salesperson uh, because his sales have gone down for the last five days, I'm sitting with a sales executive, then I'm trying to provide him a feedback, right? I'm, I'm his manager. So instead of saying that your performance have gone down instead of saying that be specific say that i see um, you are in charge of um, selling typewriters and printers so you're you're you're, you're selling printers all right but your typewriter selling performance um, or sales performance have gone down uh, so do you know what has happened or what we need to work on so when you when you be specific about what area of the performance have been affected then it will not only help you uh, it will also help the employee to focus on what has gone gone down and introspect how he can uh, bring it up. Yeah, you will have a lot more meaningful discussion and conversation around it when you are specific. Do not interrupt and do not multitask. Very important, especially these days when there are so many devices around you. You know, so when when you are providing a feedback, chances are that you are sitting in a conference room with a laptop, uh, a phone, or iPad. Uh, or a projector, so many multiple devices all around you. Your employee will also have a phone, laptop, and stuff like that. So when you when you start listening to the employee and when the feedback session start, the first thing that you should do is never interrupt. Don't think that as a manager you have to consume seventy percent of the time talking during the feedback session, right? It's not about you. It's not about your homework. It's it's not about that thing. Uh, the real intention behind it is to help the employee to improve his or her performance, right? That's the main intention. So when that's the main intention, you are not so important. You are just a guide. Yeah, you're, you're just a mirror that will show the employee a reflection of what he is or how he is doing, right? You're sharing the observation. And as a guide, you can advise uh, your employee to do this thing or that thing to improve his or her behavior. So when the employee starts speaking and start telling, his side of the story. Do not interrupt. 
interruption means that um, you are not valuing what the employee is speaking or what the employee is thinking or what the employee is going through you are not valuing that you are just valuing what you want and that can uh, you know put off any employee especially of this generation so do not interrupt listen actively and do not multitask as well try to keep your laptops phones ipads projectors everything aside yeah just just keep it aside uh, pay 100% focus and attention to the employee when you when you keep all your devices aside the employee will feel that he is getting the required attention that he expects in an organization from his manager listen 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 pay attention to detail and search for key information and this goes well with the previous one where i said um, do not interrupt and do not multitask yeah so so you need to when you are not interrupting you are listening when you're not speaking you're listening yeah when you're not multitasking you're listening and listening is such an important thing because you might have done your homework based on your uh, research and data and stuff but when you start listening to the other side of the story you might get to hear certain things that you are not prepared you have not heard of right some unknown things you might come across which you never thought might have happened to their employee or you might be able to um, get some key information when the employee starts speaking up and that might give you some indication why the performance have gone bad right so do not interrupt do not multitask and keep listening to the employee when the employee has finished then share your observations share your advices show empathy this is so important these days right because unfortunately we are in a world where most of the businesses vast majority of the businesses are being led by some very money centric uh, leaders and ceos yeah sorry for my harsh word but that's the reality yeah we we are we're in this generation where organizations are led quarter on quarter rather than being led for 20 years 50 years 100 years right so it's very short sighted leaders are leading the organization and that's where we see that uh, there are so many startups there but uh, and, and that's all over the Uh, media regarding how many startups are coming up and how booming the business world is all about right but v- very less time you'll you'll hear news that most of the st- startups are getting wrapped up in a few years in 1935 uh, the average lifespan of an organization used to be over 80 years and now uh, i think around 2 years back uh, the average lifespan of an organization is 18 years and that happened due to short sighted vision in this generation empathy is a big deal right it it never used to be such a big deal in 20th century because it was natural for most of the leaders to to uh, unintentionally uh, you know for practice empathy but now it's important that as a manager and as a leader you practice empathy and you show empathy so it can happen that one day you sit with an employee for a feedback and you have your homework done you you are all ready to engage in a meaningful feedback session and let's say for that particular day you're you're trying to provide a negative feedback and when you start providing the feedback after your opening statement that this is my observation regarding your performance what do you have to uh, say about that you might hear uh, the employee tell you certain personal issues or professional issues that he's going through that you are unaware of and uh, it might catch you off guard because you are not prepared you didn't know that's coming and you might hear some shocking stories from the employee right he might be actually going through some tough uh, personal or professional time that you are not aware of so w- when the discussion goes in that direction you might think whether i will just use certain prevalent terms and phrases like i'm sorry to hear about that let's let's get back to the discussion yeah or you would want to practice some empathy and show interest on what the employee is going through yeah you want to you want the employee to disclose everything to you he, you know and provide an environment where he feels safe to disclose everything to you that might be a time where instead of a manager you might try to be a friend and guide of an employee and ask about what's going on tell me about it and can i can i help you out on something you know do you need some help that that kind of conversation must develop and your homework your feedback everything 
becomes uh, secondary. The primary thing is about the employee then, right? And you might think that I, I will just provide the feedback on any other day. You, you might want to uh, go ahead and ask the employee whether he needs a couple of days off so that mentally he, he, he comes back to a proper state and then joins back, right? So show empathy, practice empathy. It's, it's far more important than any other thing. And, and, and it's very relevant in these days, in these times. Attack the behavior, not the person. I think when I was speaking about uh, different types of employees and I was, I think, talking about the sweet poison, the, the, the toxic employee section, I did say that when you're providing feedback to those sort of employee, uh, do not attack the person, attack the behavior. And, and it basically is a law of feedback which is applicable to everyone, right? So instead of saying, you are indisciplined. You can choose to say you are violating a code of conduct there. So how do you think you can discipline yourself in that area? That's much more acceptable to an employee rather than attacking the person saying you are dis indisciplined, you are jealous or, you know, <laughs> you have a problem. So do not attack the person, uh, specifically attack the behavior. Document feedbacks for future reference. It's so important. Uh, documenting feedback and also arrange follow-up meets for the next month or uh, at any mutually agreed date and time on agreed actions. It's so important uh, because uh, four months or five months down the line or one year down the line when you'll be sitting with an employee for an appraisal discussion, you would want to see all the documentations, all the feedbacks that you have provided to the employee because chances are that you will be leading 10, 15, 20 people in this uh, time, right? Uh, there was a time where Managers used to lead around six or seven people. Now, uh, due to due to cost pressure, uh, the the ratio of uh, managers to people, uh, or people to managers, is becoming very high, right? So there are a lot of organizations where uh, 25, 30, 40, 50 people are managed by one manager, right? So the the pressure is immense on you. So uh, you will not be able to remember each and every feedback you're providing to the employee. So that's why documentation is so important. So when you sit with the employee next time, you would want to revisit uh, the, the previous uh, feedback that you have documented and talk on, talk on that to see the progress of an employee. So document each and every feedback. Do not, do not just do a verbal feedback and a verbal follow-up. Always document and, and, and keep that as a, a reference point for the next feedback. In the part one, we discussed uh, even before you start a feedback session, what are the things that you should remember and what are the things uh, that you should keep at the back of your mind. The first thing is, what's the reason of giving a feedback? What's the intention uh, of providing a feedback? What will happen if we do not give feedback? Uh, so intent matters. And then we also discussed about what are the laws of feedback, right? Uh, what are the absolute few essentials that we should try to follow 80 to 90 percent of our time uh, you know when we provide feedback or when we at least think of giving a feedback um, to, to, and, and if you follow the laws of feedback 80 to 90 percent of the time you will be able to make your feedback sessions more meaningful and more impactful uh, just to remind you guys that in the first part we discussed about a very disturbing stats and that is, uh, as per the Gallup survey, 83% of our current generation of workforce believe uh, feedback given by the managers are not meaningful. Now, this poses a never seen challenge for the new generation of managers. When I became a manager for the first time, I never uh, faced this challenge. And I'm sure um, my managers never faced this challenge. Now, this is a generational challenge, right? We are having uh, a workforce of millennials and centennials coming in and in the next 10 to 20 years uh, pretty much you will have uh, you know a, a 70 to 80 percent uh, occupancy of millennials and centennials in our offices so the current generation of managers are already starting up with a uh, you know immense challenge where people are saying uh, 80 percent people are saying that feedback delivered are not meaningful so the main challenge is uh, for us to understand the importance of the intent of feedback, right? If your intention is not there, if your intention is not to better the performance of your team members, if your intention is not to help your team members perform better or maybe, uh, you know, uh, realize his mistakes or improve on his behavior or attitude, 
if your intention is not proper does not matter uh, even if you exhibit great skill set uh, you know during uh, feedback sessions it does not matter that's where a lot of people say feedbacks are not meaningful uh, everything was correct uh, you know the the tone of the voice was correct the ambience was correct um feedback was given properly voice was not raised but it's not meaningful right and, and that's because uh, we are compromising on the intention sometimes managers provide feedback uh, just to take that to do list that this month i have completed the feedback so feedback for the sake of giving feedback uh, you know these are seen through by uh, by people because we are all human beings you are a human being i'm also a human being uh, managers are humans employees are humans customers are humans shareholders are humans everybody are human being and we are all connected some in a subconscious way we can sense each other uh, we can sense danger we can sense safety we can sense happiness we have we have senses and and so if you are not um, uh, your intention is not honest regarding providing feedback uh, to to better your team members performance or to better your team members behavior uh that would be seen through eventually uh you know in, in in a period of time by your team members and that's where irrespective of whatever skill set you you exhibit during the feedback sessions it will not be touching them it will not make them feel that these are uh, customized feedback for them and is meaningful to them so i like to divide this into four categories category number 1 is when your intention is good uh but your feedback skills are bad uh in this case you will still be able to uh make a good manager right so there would be at times when you will lose your cool or um your choice of words will not be there uh you might not behave well uh, at times with with people because they have uh, committed a grave mistake so even if your skill sets are not there but your intention is is there that intention is to uh better the performance of the employee help the employee realize the mistake and help the employee progress uh in his career if if your intention is there it would be eventually seen through by the people that how hard you are working behind them right and and so you will be able to uh touch those people emotionally right that your manager actually um you know wa- wants uh uh wants them to improve their performance and do do good in their career it will be eventually touching them uh, personally touching them emotionally just like how your parents have touched you your parents are not uh, good to you all the time right your parents also scolds you but you eventually know that they they love you and they will do anything for you when when you're in trouble it's it's the same way uh, you know realization kicks in when your intention is is correct so if your intention is correct but your feedback skills are not there you will still be able to uh, make some impact and eventually become a good manager provided that you uh, you know when you give feedback you keep bettering your feedback skills condition number 2 is when your intention is good and your uh, feedback skills are also good uh, then you will make an awesome manager right no no doubt about it condition number 3 when your intention is bad and your feedback skills are also bad uh, you will make an awful manager so 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 you need to start learning uh, about not only feedback skills but you also need to do some self assessment whether you want this management job or not a uh, management job at the end of the day um, other than your directing and controlling stuff it's also about taking care of people that's that's basically the core of management and leadership taking care of people condition number 3 when your um, intention is bad but your feedback skills uh, skills are good in this case what can happen is you might uh, you, you might experience some short term success you might be able to impress some of your people in the way you 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 dress in the way you talk in in the you know in the the poise exhibited by you uh, the self regulation you have you might be able to impress some of your team members but if your intention is just to uh, you know provide feedback just to have a you know to do list checked um and and when your team members are in trouble you stick to the rules you stick to the policies of the of the company and you do not uh you know go go and help the employees eventually these would be seen through by your team members and uh, that that short term uh, impression will cease to exist 
so chances are you you might uh, you know taste some short term success but in the long term you might not be able to make a good manager uh, you know and forget about being a good leader uh, you might not be able to make a good manager so i i try to divide uh, these things into four conditions right and it's up to you which condition you will fit in or which condition you would want uh, yourself to be fit in all right so i think we pretty much understand the importance of the intention of providing a feedback so let's get started with this uh, video where we are going to talk about that during your feedback sessions not before or after during your feedback sessions what are the things that you can follow uh, to make your feedback even more impactful and meaningful for your employees so with practice you will be able to better all these skill sets so gather some courage uh, to to talk to people when you become a first time manager or even if you're a manager uh for for the last one or two years and you're not uh, giving enough feedbacks uh do remember feedback skills can only improve if you provide more and more feedback so practice makes perfect uh you will not be able to follow all these skills uh straight away you will only become good at providing feedback and you know uh, you know with with more and more practice the more feedback you provide the better you become right so do not shy away from providing feedback uh, thinking that it would be a negative feedback and i don't know how the employee will uh, you know take it or whether the employee will resign thinking that my manager does not like me do not think of all those negative things um, there are studies and surveys that revealed that employees who get negative feedback are at least more engaged than the employees who do not receive feedback at all so you do not need to think about all these negative things right gather some courage and uh, start giving feedback so enough of talking let's move to the screen and start learning let's start with uh, the basics how to give feedback i i would want to start with negative feedback because i believe it's the negative feedback which keeps managers you know awake at night <laughs> right a lot of managers are thinking so much about whether i should tell this or not tell this whether whether i should sh sit with the employee talk about this issue that i have observed or not how i don't know how would the employee react all these um, contradictions that appears in or or that happens in managers mind is mostly uh, around negative feedbacks so we are going to target negative feedback first so if a feedback is negative then try as much as possible to give that feedback at the end of the day before the employee closes for the day since post receiving a criticism it is very difficult for an employee to work or interact with colleagues uh, or to focus in work and there is no time to reflect upon the feedback uh, wherein the understanding and realization kicks in so as much as possible try to make sure the negative feedback should be given end of the day so that after the feedback session is over the employee can move move back home so while traveling or after reaching home the employee uh, can spend some time all by himself or herself thinking about what went wrong and what he can do or she can do to uh, come out of that uh, performance since people are defensive to criticism always start with positive points uh, this will make the employee feel good about himself or herself and make him um, open up for the difficult conversation later on the main challenge is always to make employees realize the mistakes right not only understand but realize uh, their mistakes and area of improvement so just let me expand this uh, a bit a lot of you might be thinking why i'm emphasizing too much on realization rather than understanding understanding is basically part of your uh, the the neocortex the outer brain right it's, it's it's the logical rational thinking brain so understanding is part of it so when you learn something when you get trained on something when you analyze something rationally when you see a data and your eye starts moving and your head starts analyzing it's all happening in the rational section of the brain the neocortex however true change in a person whether it's whether it you know it's a behavior mostly behavior uh but also to some extent on performance true change in a person comes in when he not only understands the subject but also realize the inner inner content uh, or realize the deep meaning of, of that so uh, particularly behavior uh, if you want to change the behavior of an employee uh, through feedback then you need to 
understand that simply by telling an employee uh, that I saw you doing this uh, or I think you should do that simply by uh, giving employee instruction that this is the policy you should abide by the policy simply by giving those instruction uh, you can trigger the understanding part of it however unless the employee realizes his mistake he will not make a genuine effort to uh, correct his behavior so the important part is make the employee realize his mistakes uh, and the area of improvement then only he will truly put in an effort to improve that part right and and, and change will start coming in but understanding is a very short process so uh, you can provide a feedback you can make somebody understand with your logical reasoning but realization is a longer process uh, and realization takes time it takes takes time of reflection it takes time of experience it takes a lot of time to come to a realization about something and then you change so um, the, the the true challenge is to make employee realize their area of improvement and mistakes rather than only emphasizing showing them data and make them rationally believe that their performance is poor they need to work on them or their behavior is not up to the code of conduct the other part is uh, whenever you are giving negative feedback it's basically a criticism that one gets right because either on his performance or uh, on his behavior so it's a criticism and often it's a very human thing that whenever a human being receives criticism the first approach is uh, defensive so whenever somebody attacks you instinctively you uh, you know put up your hands either to save yourself or to fight right the the flight or fight response so that's that's your um, instinctive reaction because that's coming from your reptilian part of the brain the flight or fight syndrome so whenever you attack an employee or criticize somebody the always the first instinct is to uh, be defensive right so the moment an employee uh, put his arms up then uh, it would be very difficult for you to uh, penetrate those closed arms and land your punch on the face right i i don't mean literally land your punch on the face that's not not the point but you get it so when you know that a difficult conversation is about to happen and you are going to um you know talk about a very unpleasant thing um, a, a criticism of the employee or negative feedback you know that that's coming in it's always better to uh, start with the positive feedback about the employee what what are the things that you have observed that the employee is doing very well and whenever anybody gets a uh, praise from someone everybody feels good about it right maybe th- maybe woman feels uh, better than men but men also feels good about it right so the the point is to start with a positive with the positive points right every every employee will have positives and negatives it's on a relative scale but you will find definitely positive points you start with positive points the moment you start with positive points you shower, shower your praise on the employee for his good work then automatically the employee um, calms down and uh, he's less defensive now right and it, and it, that's the time that uh, you should utilize to put in the important point which you intend to put in the intention is not manipulation the intention is to make the employee relaxed calm uh, so that he can listen to the criticism with an open mind if he if he does listen to his criticism with an open mind chances are that he will uh, realize his mistakes and he will try to correct those uh, either performance or behavior keep these two things in mind show respect to the person's opinion and practice some diplomacy if a person is wrong listen patiently to all he has to say then begin by saying either well i was thinking from another point of view or maybe you can say well i thought otherwise instead of saying no 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 you are completely wrong uh, i'll tell you what's correct yeah i'll tell you what has happened no don't don't take that approach because again when you attack a person directly uh, he will again become defensive so whatever you're going to say after that you know the employee might not it might not penetrate in the employee's mind right so the important thing is whatever you're saying needs to penetrate in the employee's deeper mind and if you want to do that then uh, do not contradict argue with an employee so when a, when you know that the employee has done something wrong and he's just 
putting up a defense. Listen patiently to all he has to say and then begin by saying that, uh, well, I thought otherwise. Uh, or maybe you can also say, I may be wrong and sometimes I am wrong. And if I am, then I would want to be put right by you. Let's see my point of view here as well. So start the conversation in that way. It will definitely open up the employee. The employee would be more ready to absorb the bad news or the criticism. Uh, this, this is just an expansion to the previous slide that do not engage in an argument that I was saying you before. When you lose an argument, you lose. When you win an argument, you also lose. And let me try to make this a bit more clear if uh, you know some of you are a bit confused. Argument is a form of a debate. You typically know how debate works. There's a topic they, and there are two or more sides. Let's, for an example, consider two sides. One side will talk uh, for the topic and one side will talk against the topic. And both the side will argue and debate with each other and try to see um, you know, who will win. Right? There's a stipulated time, there's a host who is keeping the time, giving equal opportunity for both the sides to speak up. And at the end of the debate or an argument, one party wins. And if no party wins in a, in a war or argument or debate, then you have to kill one person or murder one person, then only it stops, right? So all fighting, argument, debate uh, can only stop if one person loses or one person uh, is dead, right? Otherwise, it keeps going on. So argument is never good. So do not engage in argument. Now, what happens if you win an argument or if you win a debate? What happens then? If you're on the winning side, uh, you have won the debate, you might get the prize. However, you have not truly won because you are fighting for the topic and your opponent were, was fighting against the topic. Now, maybe through some good examples or rational samples that you have been able to present or maybe you have, you have been able to ar articulate certain things better than your opponent. That's why your opponent lost, right? Uh, maybe you did all those things correct, or maybe you you were uh, you know supporting the right cause. Maybe, but the but the issue is that you are truly a winner if you would have convinced your opponent that you were right. But in an argument, when somebody wins, or in a debate, when somebody wins after a series of shouting and arguing against each other, how many times you have seen you you have been able to truly convince? your opponent that you were right hardly any time right and rather the starting point when the debate i mean when the debate starts the position that your opponent uh, took uh, before the debate that is i will talk against the topic and after losing the debate what is the state of mind of your opponent after losing the debate is the state of mind something weaker than the starting point or is the state of mind stronger right now, more convincing uh, that he was actually correct just because the speaker or the host did not give fair fair amount of time or just because he could not articulate things in a proper way and you, you did, you won and I lost. But I know that uh, I was debating for the right cause. I was arguing for the right cause. So the starting point of the debate the state of mind wherever that opponent was and the end of the debate when the opponent has lost it has been amplified so now your opponent believes more in that topic right and on top of that uh, he does not have any goodwill on you <laughs> right so at the end of the day in front of people you might have won the debate or or the argument but actually uh, you have lost and of course you have lost the debate you have already lost so that's why it says that when you win an argument, you also lose. And when you lose an argument, you, of course, lose. And this was also articulated very beautifully by Sir uh, Benjamin Franklin, who said, if you argue, rankle and contradict, you may achieve a victory sometime. But that would be a very, um, that would be an empty victory because uh, you will never gain your opponent's goodwill. So all in all, the the point is that when you are providing feedback to an employee and you're let's say you're providing some negative feedback and although you're trying to um, you know you're providing feedback with all the right intentions you're trying to play all your cards correctly but a lot of time things can go wrong 
right? A lot of times uh, an employee might react to the negative feedback. Uh, you might be uh, given certain uh, other opinions about your observation. Certain other things might come into the conversation which you never predicted and you might see that the whole conversation is going to a different direction and you know you are arguing with the employee employees arguing with you it, it's it's basically not a you know good idea to continue that feedback session always remember that uh, nothing is hard and fast right so whenever you approach with plan a and the plan a fails you should always have a plan b right and the plan b in this case would be to drop out of that conversation yeah don't don't continue that feedback session drop out of that conversation uh, let the employee know that uh, you you might have to think about this uh, uh, analysis or research that he has done on you uh, you might have to sit on that once again and you will get back to him take some time off and maybe meet the employee after a day or two when uh, the the situation has calmed down a bit do not provide feedback for the sake of providing feedback intent of providing feedback is to bring in a change in the way of working or in the behavior of an employee or to make the employee feel good about himself and proud about himself of what he has been able to achieve that's the intent of feedback and uh, if you see that uh, through argument intent is getting hurt then uh, draw out of that feedback and try to engage with the employee later on always welcome disagreements do not lose temper and distrust your first instinct uh, distrusting your first instinct is also a fundamental concept of uh, emotional intelligence and people who are a student of the subject of emotional intelligence will will know this already that emotional intelligence always tells you to distrust your first instinct right uh, if your first in instinct um, is of anger then uh, don't trust your anger yeah the moment you distrust your first instinct you would find yourself uh, more focused into the subject rather than uh, what you're feeling about it at the first go right so distrust your first instinct because it can lead you to make certain wrong decisions okay um, you can always rely back on your first instinct later on if you think that your first instinct your second instinct your third instinct your fourth instinct everything is pointing towards the same direction then it's fine but the uh, immediately uh, when you engage with someone and either you get you get super excited or very angry uh, that's not good right so try to uh, distrust your first instinct it will help you to remain focused on your mission of providing a, a well-rounded constructive feedback disagreement is your first opportunity to sometimes correct yourself if any mistakes are on your end emphatically admit your mistakes openly once again a, a tip and trick for disarming your opponent in this case your uh, reportee who is not your opponent but uh, you know you're providing feedback to your reportee so from that perspective he is your opponent right because you're having a conversation and so so you're always looking for you know ways and means to disarm your opponent so that you when it, whenever you're delivering those critical observations you want uh, those critical observations to land in the right spot a and it also makes way for getting the feedback absorbed well uh, during disagreement always look for areas of agreement and uh, summarize them there's also a very important part where we say that let the other person save face praise wholeheartedly at even the slightest of improvement seen it increases the chances of improvement and repetition of good work done by the employee whenever an employee has committed a mistake even before you provide a feedback that employee already knows that he has committed a mistake most of the time we we know that we have done some something wrong our our inner conscience always talks to us right so we know we have done something wrong and whenever our wrongdoing gets caught uh, by someone then a lot of us reacts different way but majority of us uh, we we have a we try to put up our defense right we we try to put reasons and excuses to save ourselves from that humiliation when you talk about any mistake or any negative feedback uh, you know uh, to an employee and 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 the employee tries to defend himself or herself by citing some reasons and excuses right the first one or two times that you see this don't just try to corner the employee with more and more facts just to prove him 
wrong that all the things that you're trying to say is just excuses don't don't go that way right when an employee is trying to defend himself or herself it is just a natural biological reaction of a human being to put up his defense right because these days people are very scared of uh, getting punished for their mistakes or losing their job or getting a warning letter people are very scared of uh, of the job because uh, the job market is such a way that the leaders and ceos who leads the organization does not lead people with empathy right so even with slightest of mistake they are okay to terminate an employee so people are people are always scared uh, and whenever they they think they have committed a mistake and that mistake has has been noticed by uh, especially manager they always would try to put up some excuses and reasons and defenses i'm not saying that always entertain those but for the first one or two sessions where uh, an employee is trying to put up some defense try to give the employee few more chances to to improve on his behavior buy into those excuses intentionally don't just try to uh, prove the employee wrong even if you can prove the employee wrong don't don't go that way let the employee save his face intention is to make the employee realize that somebody has noticed your mistake and the employee would know that okay this time i got saved this time i was able to put some excuses and i was saved but if it is next time then the same excuses will not run and even if the employee provides an excuse next time you you might want to consider that as well but do understand that you are the same employee you are the same human being who are giving uh, reasons of excuses and mistakes with every reasons or excuses you are providing to your manager you know that your life is getting short so there is only two ways one is uh if you if you cannot change if you think that you will continue doing this then you have to leave the organization and if that happens you you may be saved you as an employer can be saved because you are you know you are safe from a employee who could have uh, potentially be a risk to your business right he could have uh, leaked out a sensitive information to your customer right so it can be a potential threat to your business but if it is the other way around if the employee is actually a trying guy right actually a person who committed mistake and he realized and he and he appreciates the empathy shown by his or her manager when when he would try to put in his genuine effort to improve uh, just imagine how much respect he will have for you as a manager right because you as a manager gave him a chance did not misunderstood him right so always always let the person save the face for for at least for uh, some time do not take for granted your star performers they are the people who deserve feedbacks too while giving feedback to stars praise wholeheartedly and do not hold back tell them specifically which characteristics of them are liked by you and why they are they are also so valuable do not let the feedback end only with praise as i said before that your star performers might be requiring minimum feedback or minimum coaching from you because that's why they are star right they are role model however they will cease to become star or they will not be with you or with your organization if you fail to provide them uh, the appropriate challenges that can stimulate them give them the next challenge which is an area of their improvement the next one is seeking feedback uh, we we spoke about how to provide feedback now it's time to seek feedback this is an this is an important aspect of uh, of management that at least in 21st century uh, it has its relevance and all you first time managers and people who want to become managers uh, in the coming years this this would be one important aspect of your uh, leadership and management career seeking feedback feedback is a two way communication so encourage team members also to provide you feedback as well not too long back i think these days also uh, i mean in my times we used to have something which which we used to say uh, hr skip level meeting it's basically called a skip feedback or hr level skip feedback typically it happens when uh, maybe quarterly or semester wise or yearly wise your hr or your manager's boss or maybe the head of the department will come to you uh, they will tell your manager to wait outside the room and they will try to talk to you and they will try to spy on your manager 
<laughs> kind of uh, try to get a straight feedback uh, from you on how good or bad your manager is so that employees can open up and if your manager is not good they can they can speak up uh, but the intention of the skip feedback is to understand how managers are working right whether the employees are getting feedback whether employees are happy with the manager or not that's basically the intention of the skip level feedback the, but the issue that i find with skip level feedback is, is, is trust through the skip level feedback are you elevating the trust between the manager and his manager are you elevating the trust or are you beating the trust down right i think you are beating the trust down because if i am a manager and if my manager does not trust me that i am i'm doing a good job with my team member and he jumps over the top of my head and reaches directly to my team member to ask how am i managing them then do i feel trusted by my manager no right so it does not do any good to the trust even if it is an hr it still does not talk about trust right so i think the best way that i have found myself uh, that is to go to the employees directly that you manage and ask them for a feedback now it might happen that uh, you know since you are a manager a lot of employee might not open up thinking that if if they something if they say something bad about you or criticize you then you might take a kind of revenge back on them right or maybe use certain organization policies and procedures against that particular employee maybe uh, not promote him or maybe not uh, provide him a proper increment thinking about those things an employee might not open up and it is true yeah i'm i'm not i'm not impractical so it is true however the i mean when you vet the pros and cons of this uh, self feedback the pros are much more heavier than the cons and the pros are increased trust between you and your reportees increased openness of course the first time the employee might not open up but when you conduct these self seeking feedback again and again month on month year on year when you conduct that maybe one person out of your team and of course you have to walk the talk right so so it will give uh, some courage to one person out of your team to maybe one day say can i tell you something i do see that uh, on friday you leave office early and that can kind of puts us into a bit of trouble because those customer who ask for you in the later and later part of the day we are unable to transfer this customer to you and we have to manage this customer all by ourselves and i think that's not helping our customer yeah so maybe one employee one fine day speak up against you right the moment you you hear something negative about you some criticism about you emphatically admit your mistake if it is a mistake yeah if it is a mistake if you think that actually that's the that's the correct thing emphatically admit your mistakes make that employee stand up and appreciate that employee that he he did talk about certain things which is not happening right yeah and then work on that yourself your your people must see you going through that same drill that you preach and teach every day if you just talk about integrity if you just talk about honesty if you talk about punctuality all those talks that you do all those uh, pep talks or motivational talks that you do uh, actually does not land in the right spot because a lot of lot of you might not be uh, walking the talk when you walk the talk inspiration starts from there you know when employee see that you're talking the right things and you're also walking the talk right if you're just talking the right things but you're not walking the talk there's no inspiration right so inspiration starts there so whenever you find even one employee talking against you praise that employee for for being so candid with you thank the employee for letting you know that you have a blind spot and uh, you know tell the employee that you will work on that and try to better yourself on that right and and genuinely work towards that and when you do that other employees get the courage to speak up against you and the more uh you know more and more employee will talk uh against you and you know criticize you and you know see certain areas of improvements in you this would be your opportunity to understand your your weak areas rather than your manager your hr coming to you and saying that you need to improve on this by doing this exercise you would already know 
what are your areas of improvement? What are the things that employees are looking for you but not getting from you? That is benefit number one. Benefit number two, increase trust. Just understand how much how much trust you are developing within the team that your manager is open to criticism. If our manager is open to his own criticism from us, then who are we to not be open to criticism when he provides a feedback to us? Think think about the larger uh, impact it will have on your employees, right? Um, and and you might not might not have to remember and employ all these tips and tricks of providing feedback. Through through this self-seeking feedback mechanism, you might be able to inspire your entire team, and providing feedback, positive or negative, might become so easy that your employee would be almost reading you even before you provide the feedback. Yeah, so. Encourage your team member to provide provide you feedback as well. This way, you will develop your weak areas and become a very strong leader. Um, on the other hand, you will also promote employee engagement and make your feedback sessions more effective since an employee will open up in a very clean system and receive feedback as well. Last but not the least, create a feedback loop. As I said, and just to summarize, feedback is all about an observation and once you observe you provide the feedback once you provide the feedback you take action in in form of you you document the feedback and you uh, set up an action plan for the employee and once you do that you have to follow up on the employee whether the things that we agreed on were being actioned so you have to you have to set up follow up uh, meeting maybe uh, in, uh, on the next month or the next week, whatever you desire. Once you follow up, once again you start observing whether it's being actioned on. Once again you provide feedback, then action, then follow up, and the cycle goes again and again and again and again. It gets repeated. So this is what we call a feedback loop, uh, and and it's it's important that in your team, or in your group, or in your organization you create this feedback loop and you create this feedback loop in a constructive way positive way and you keep following it yeah it might be a very boring um you know monotonous routine that you might have to do a, a kind of a drill that you do have to do every single day just like brushing your teeth but creating a feedback loop would be very essential element of your feedback mechanism so i hope you guys like the content and um, hope you guys made uh, a few notes wherever you think you'd be applying that immediately or in future once again i have told it many times it's more important to walk the talk rather than talking the right things right so we are right now training and talking the right things the challenge of management and leadership is how you walk the talk how you practice what you learn i'll see you in the next video till that time you take care and uh, stay healthy